towers, poles, and wires that stretch across the landscape deliver a steady stream of electrons, electricity, to our homes, offices, farms, and factories. We rely so heavily on this mysterious, invisible force that it's nearly impossible not to take it for granted. But could these poles and wires also be delivering something that isn't beneficial? Could they also be delivering something that's damaging our health? More and more people are coming to believe that electricity and its unintended byproducts are making families and livestock seriously ill. These are their stories. One of these calves was uh, born with a, an opening about a foot long right over the umbilical. And this calf appeared to be born alive but died shortly afterwards and it was dead when I found it. But it had this opening and a lot of the organs had just fallen outside the body. Thomas and Sharon Revere operate a dairy farm in northwest Minnesota. During the 1980s, the Reveres noticed a significant decline in their herd's milk production. Around the same time, they also saw a decline in the health of their cows. If they got any uh, stress on them or any disease or sickness, we couldn't seem to pull them out of it. They would just deteriorate rather than get well. They didn't respond to normal treatments. Uh, we'd have the vet come several times and they would just continue to deteriorate until often they died. Their veterinarians have attributed the cow's problems to environmental factors. Dealing with stillborn calves and dying cows has become a part of the Revere's daily routine. But coping with sick livestock isn't their hardest burden. We have uh, three children that were born with unusual birth defects. And although they aren't exactly the same, there is some relationships. Our youngest son, Paul, was uh, born with lungs that were not completely developed properly. And as a result, he can't exchange air and carbon dioxide in the manner that he should be able to. At first, they said it was a genetic disorder, but after uh, several years of dealing with them and running some tests, they've determined that it's not genetic, and therefore we assume that it was environmental. He's past the age now where the lung tissue can regenerate itself, and he also has chronic pneumonias, which continually damage the tissue so he's uh, gradually losing lung function capacity. Sharon has taken over much of the extensive care for Paul and maintains the complex equipment that's keeping him alive. When they discovered in um, January just how bad his lungs were, the, the doctors then said he didn't think he held much hope for more than And now, three or four years. <laughs> he didn't think he'd live past four years, another four years. After years of research and consulting with dozens of doctors, the Reveres came to suspect the high tension electrical lines that run along the edge of their property. A few years ago, an industrial power quality expert took comprehensive measurements on the Revere farm and confirmed that they had a problem with what's sometimes called stray voltage. Not only were high levels of ground currents and high frequency electrical pollution coursing through their barn, they were also streaming through their house. Electricity appears to affect our cow's production and the cow's health. We also feel that it affects our family's health. The Reveres routinely experience extreme fatigue, nausea, and headaches. They've repeatedly asked their electrical utility for help, but so far, 
Those requests have fallen on deaf ears. Uh, Paul did have an older sister who had lung and heart problems also. Immediately following her birth, their daughter was admitted to the ICU at Children's Hospital in nearby Fargo. There she was uh, put on oxygen support and a respirator and uh, they uh, kept her going for a year and a half. She was just uh, a little angel to the nurses in the hospital. Once her heart stopped, it never beat again. It's a Dave Stetzer is an electrical contractor and power quality expert who spent most of his career helping factories and other businesses solve power quality problems. In recent years, Stetzer has visited hundreds of homes and farms throughout the Midwest where he's used specialized diagnostic instruments to measure electrical pollution. At nearly all of these homes, residents consistently report symptoms that include nausea, fatigue, headaches, depression, even seizures. One of the places Stetzer took measurements was at the John and Debbie Byrell farm in central Wisconsin. At one time, the Byrells ranked among the top 60 milk producers in the country. But in 1992, things started to go sour. Their milk production took a nosedive, and then their cows started dying. And also, when we've did autopsies, we found where they they were healthy cattle, but for some reason their uh, blood vessels would rupture, and uh, they bled to death inside. The vet's comment at that time, he says, "I think there's something that is underlying here." He says, "You work far harder than the normal farmer." that there's something else going on here in the environment. But we've had other sores, like on their hawks and uh, some udder ulcers that in the early years, we never seen any of that kind of uh, problems. My veterinarians firmly believe that what's going on here on this farm is re electrically related. Like the Revere's in Minnesota, the Byrolls began to suspect a link between electrical pollution and their own health. As a family, um, we have everything from headaches, uh, nauseousness, upset stomachs, uh, a lot of times impending flu symptoms that never break. We are kind of in denial for a while. You just think that it's affecting the cows, but then uh, when you start to walk like they do and when you get up in the morning, you're as stiff as, as the cows are. You know, I, I told you know, my friends that I, and my, my parents actually, that I feel a hundred years old some mornings. As a result of watching specialized monitoring equipment that was installed on their farm, they've determined that when the electrical activity is high, they feel worse. I always knew that it had to be electrical because uh, so many times we'd get sick in the barn and you'd have this upset stomach and it was like when you got a shock, the, af the few seconds after you got a shock off an electric fence, you had this sickening, hollow feeling in your stomach. In 1992, the same year that the Byrolls started having problems, electrical utilities in Wisconsin and across the country installed ground rods on utility poles. The purpose was to alleviate overloading on the neutral wires that return current to the distribution hubs in order to complete a circuit. But this returning current is polluted with high frequency energy that spilled back into the power grid by computers, home electronics, and certain kinds of industrial motors. Once this polluted current is released into the ground, it finds the path of least resistance back to the distribution hub. If a house or farm is in that path, those structures become conductors of electrical pollution. I spent two years trying to get the utilities to fix it. They wouldn't do anything, so then we, we did some more rearranging on the farm here, like rewiring and whatnot then we were convinced that this was out of our hands. So we went back to the utilities. They would come and check, do this, do that. They couldn't find anything. And well, basically they'd say, the levels are so low here on your farm, there's nothing we can do. And they'd walk away. Scientists have determined that high frequency electrical pollution enters the home in two ways. 
One is over the ground, coming across the floors into the house that way, water pipes, etc., etc. The second way is on the electrical phase conductors, the hot wires, so to speak, that come into the panel, which is then applied to every receptacle in the house, every light switch, every light, the wires run ahead, above your head, below your feet, uh, around your body in every room that you're in. The high